defined in the Oxford Dictionary of Social Sciences, refers to the productive and erotic dimensions of human life at once physical and culturally constructed. Fruit and psychology was perhaps the dominant force in shaping modern perspectives on sexuality, exerting an influence that extended well beyond the audience of academic and professional psychologists. Fruit treated sexuality as the motive force behind the formation of the psyche nearly all subsequent adult behavior. Although other psychological schools, such as object relations theory, took attempts to bridge psychology and other social sciences, sexuality was generally studied by sociologists and anthropologists only insofar as it intersected with social scientific in nature. Although psycho psychologists such as Richard Kraft Ebbing collected data about sexual practices, sexuality is taken even further to include how it was defined in past cultures and the definition in the Oxford Dictionary of the Classical World. Both Greeks and Romans divided sexual behavior into active and passive, as well as some say, but not, homosexual and heterosexual. The normative role for adult males was penetrative, active, penetrated, passive. Partners were normally women and boys aged 12 to 17. Texts generally convey the experience of penetrators and evaluate passivity negatively, at worst oral, as contaminating. Prior 1850, there was no label for sexuality. A person's sex life was just that, a sex life, and no other labels were needed. Despite not being labeled as homosexuality, practices that nowadays would be labeled as such were done by groups such as Victorians, the ancient Greeks, and the ancient Koreans. So why homosexuality has a stigma of being a second-rate sexuality is something that will be explored further in this video. As stated in the article, At Home with Other Victorians, written by Sharon Marks, like domesticity, homosexuality is eminently Victorian. Homosexuality was shown largely as a male thing, but there was much literature about how when women embraced le lesbianism, they were fighting against domesticity because domesticity was shown was viewed as very heterosexual and required women to do a lot of the domestic work in the home. In the Greek culture, homosexuality was part of the slave life and part of becoming men for young boys. In Athenian culture, homosexuality was view was used to show power, not necessarily pleasure. Korean homosexuality was can be traced back all the way to 57 BC, where it was practiced by the military group of the Sali dynasty. Much has changed since then, and now in Korean in Korea, homosexuality is viewed as a disease. One can see that homosexuality, despite being prominent in many cultures' histories, are no longer practiced and can and even looked down upon. This is a surprising yet widely accepted thing throughout many cultures. Why this has happened is something of great argument, but these facts that have been discussed have not been brought to attention. Many religions and people say that this is a disorder that can and should be cured, but if this is true, then why has it been practiced as something that helps the children and cultures grow? It's hard to tell. Through all the research that I've put into this video, I had a hard time finding reasons as to why homosexuality is not accepted as it was before, as a part of life and not something about someone that needs to be changed. The public needs to see and understand this or in order for homosexuality stigma of being a second-rate sexuality to be removed.